Well, hey everybody, it's your good buddy 650 Eve here coming to you from a very windy day in Cleveland, Ohio. But guess what? It's February 15th, it's gorgeous out here, and we're gonna ride our motorcycles. Today will be the very first time that I'm riding my brand new 2023 BMW S1000 RR. So I wanna see, is there any difference between this bike and the older models? If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, and for returning subscribers, tap that bell and you'll get notified when new content is uploaded. Well, I can tell you that the bike looks great in this beautiful red colorway with all of the beautiful stickers and graphics on this machine. I think BMW did a very good job designing this new version of the S1000RR. And um, we've already installed a full Akrapovich exhaust system. Headers and mid-pipe are titanium. The canister is carbon fiber. This is the exact same exhaust that can be found on my M1000RR in the garage over there. Oh, yeah. As I pan over here to mention, I'm going to be riding today with my good buddy Gary. He's riding the Wolfman's beautiful Honda Triple R Fireblade SP, which has a similar exhaust, but this one has beautiful Tissing Crump carbon fiber wheels from the one and only Miami Manny at Moto Million. Yes, that bike looks great. And we've got King David, the excellent painter that does remarkable work on all of his paint projects on his beautiful beauty of a machine 2012 s 1000 rr with blackstone tech carbon fiber wheels on it those wheels have over what david 40,000 miles on them like yeah lots of miles on those wheels so i don't want to hear any stories and folklore about carbon fiber wheels not being reliable because they are yeah he agrees but yeah it's windy we're gonna jump on these bikes how about a cold start of the s 1000 rr you guys love that kind of stuff. Let's give it to you. some of the differences between this bike and the older machines one of the first things that I notice is that the windscreen is larger yes BMW is using a taller windscreen but it looks like there's more area covered over here as well which might be acting as somewhat of a spoiler but I don't remember this being on the 2020s through 2022 machines one thing that is obvious the very moment you step on this bike and ride it is that the throttle is very very smooth previously on the older bikes even when you're breaking them in and before the rev limit is removed the throttle had been a little choppy now it is completely dialed in and hundred percent smooth on this particular example of an outstanding machine I mean we've always thought that BMW makes incremental improvements to their machines every year and sometimes they don't even bother to mention it. They don't toot their own horn, if you would, and say, hey, we've done this, we've done that, we've done this. But I can clearly feel that this bike has been thoroughly reworked and is very, very amazing at this point. A very smooth throttle is really <laughs> the, uh, the basis for any sport bike. I mean, you definitely need to have that before you start looking at other things and other ways to improve the machines. And this bike definitely has that. Now, I can tell you that the stock suspension feels great. This is the machine with the dynamic suspension. So as I go over some of these horrible potholes and bumps, it recognizes that and it handles it accordingly. And it makes for a very almost plush ride on this bike almost not sport bike-esque you know but uh, I'm glad that it's there I'm glad that it's working it's totally different than the fixed suspension the fixed lean suspension that is on my M1000 double R and whenever I ride these S1000s I immediately 
<laughs> I'm immediately greeted with the fact that I have a nice suspension again that oh, handles these bumps nicely and I love, I love it. Oh boy, these, this road. You know guys, this road would be epic for me doing test routes and stuff on if it were smoothed out and if it were freshly paved and all that. I'm not exactly sure that's ever going to happen. Uh, but if it does, you will see me riding these roads at a very brisk pace. Brisk pace for me, I might add. <laughs> I'm never going to be Rennie Skaysbrook on these roads, but I will give it my best once they're improved. I love the sound of the full exhaust system that's on this bike. I love the popping that it makes on D-Cell. That's amazing. But yeah, this bike has been improved. I mean, it already had one of the best or the best TFT gauge clusters in the business. Full eight inch anti-glare shows the recommended speed limit. When you have it connected to the BMW connected app on your cell phone, has caller ID, turn by turn navigation, and you don't have to buy any extra model modules or anything like that to get all of that awesomeness. It comes with its standard and you gotta respect that. I am digging the new uh, triple tree, I like it. I like that it's absent holes. I think that it looks great the way it is right there. So, so far I'm really enjoying this revised 2023 S1000 double R. This bike is great. <laughs> it has a really snappy throttle, really great. You know, I think that's really going to be amazing and improved just a little bit once the Brent tuning is applied to this fantastic machine, which will happen after we achieve over 400 miles on this bike, which we're trying to do today on this anatomy weather day here that's totally, uh, totally anti-winter for Cleveland. This is more like a, an April day than anything else. And uh, we're out here taking advantage of it. And you would, you would too, wouldn't you? So there, yeah, I'm on a decline and I'm using the hill hold feature. The S1000 is the only super bike. Oh, that's another BMW. But it has the hill hold option, and I love it. Self-canceling turn signals, let's see if they're still, yeah. Self-canceling turn signals still work. And what's new for 2023 is that you can actually disable that if you wanted to. Not sure exactly why somebody would want to disable self-canceling turn signals. If there is anyone that has an idea why you would do that, please drop a comment below and let us know, as I'm very curious. So what's also new for this bike is now, when you're breaking the bike in, the tachometer it has read anything over 8,000 RPM. To let you know that that's your max. The bike won't go anything higher than that. And when you get to it, up the whole tachometer flashes now. When you're at the rev limit, not just the white light. Watch this again. Yeah, so everything flashes. That's pretty cool. But it's still flashing. All right, all right, all right. I get it. I get it. <laughs> I can do when the motorcycle is limited to basically 120 miles an hour. <laughs> so my good buddy Gary takes advantage of that and smacks me down on the Fireblade SP. Very nice looking Fireblade I might add. <laughs> so King David spanks Gary. Yeah. 
Snow for an 11 year old motorcycle. King David's 2012 S1000 sure looks great. And it goes to show you how the design language of that motorcycle was ahead of its time when it premiered in 2010 and now the motorcycles in the industry are just now catching up to it. Because that is a beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous machine. So we're using a turn-by-turn -turn navigation system to get us to the local Five Guys for lunch. And we're in downtown Mansfield, Ohio. For whatever that's worth. I don't know if there's anything to see in this downtown area or not, but I'm going to show you. Okay, in small town. Uh, and that's about the, I guess that's the gist of the downtown area, huh? <laughs> but uh, riding this bike for uh, about 200 miles so far, it feels great still. Um, this is one of the most comfortable motorcycles, super sport motorcycles ever produced. If you're tall, six foot three like me and then taller, you're gonna love the ergonomics and the seating position of this machine. So, since we're stuck by this train, I think it's now a good time for me to tell you how amazing this bike looks in this beautiful red colorway. Every single colorway of the 2023 S1000 is magnificent. They have the black, the motorsports. This is just fantastic. Love all the graphics on the bike. I mean, look at it next to the Fireblade SP. I mean, it holds its own. I dare say that this bike looks even better than the Fireblade SP in its stock configuration. Looks almost as nice as that graffiti on the trains there. Welcome to Mansfield, Ohio. Ah, the five guys. And we have premium parking, it seems. Oh, it's windy. I gotta make sure I park this in a fashion that it doesn't, the bike doesn't blow over us. Hey, are we parked in the right direction? Huh? You're white. Use your geometry. Are we parked in the right, the right direction? So the, so is the, which way is the wind blowing? So are we parked correctly? Or should we turn the other way? Uh, I mean, I don't think the wind's gonna knock this over. Uh, I think we should turn the other way. I, yeah. There we go. That's more stable. All right, well, during the break in, top speed with my arse on the bike in six gear going downhill. It's still only 127 miles per hour. And it won't go any far any faster than that and you know that's probably not needed you know during the break-in period if you think you need to be going faster than 127 mile an hour i think you're desperately wrong i think i figured out how to get that amazing popping sound to happen whenever i want <laughs> It sounds great. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. I love it. And I also love this revised 2023 K67 S1000 RR. The changes they made to the bike are outstanding. I mean, this was already a darn near perfect machine, and now it just got that much better. You got a taller windscreen stock, you got winglets revised the graphics all over the bike and the rear tail section you can mount a GoPro or an action camera to the back that's that's just remarkable alone 
And then you've got a silky smooth throttle that I believe has been tweaked to make this bike even more refined than, than it was. So yeah, I'm in love with this 2023 S1000RR. And we've only just begun installing parts onto this machine. You saw us install, well, Zach the Master Mechanic installed in the Krapovich full titanium exhaust with carbon fiber canister onto the bike. It sounds great. It enables us to do these amazing popping sounds. And the quick shift and auto boop are still magnificent on this bike. But we're going to install more parts onto it and then we're going to give it away. Click on the link in the description of any of my videos and you can join our Patreon family, support the new bike build series, and you might just ride away on this amazing machine. Alright, we're going to make more content for you coming up real soon. Thanks for viewing, guys. We'll catch you next time on the 650 YouTube channel. Ah, won't let me rev it too much.